no, no, no. Shoot. I finally figured this out. I had a rough start today, Chad. Wasn't wasn't getting the record button going, but now we're recording. It's good. We're good. Uh, well. And you had your mic off, so uh, I didn't even want to hear it. Yeah, but that was a while ago. That yeah. was like 20 minutes ago I had my mic off. <laughs> It's you've been, been trying like to a year and a half. you've been trying to press the right button for like fifteen minutes. Uh, <sighs> well, you know, and and we're talking about muscle memory here. <laughs> at least I have muscle memory. At least, at least I have it's that muscle. Part yeah, down. yeah. At least you got that. Right, memory, memory. Uh, not so much. Do you remember what we're talking about yet? Uh, I forget. Oh, I can't remember. Jeezy crazy. Yeah, no, we we are we are going to talk about muscle memory today and a little bit more about what that is about how we can establish better muscle memory and really what that process what that is about, what it actually is and how it affects our training. But first, we're going to talk about our weekend. We're going to talk about our lives because, you know, people care and people want to know how we're doing. Well, if you want to know how I'm doing, I don't know. Uh, I never get any requests uh, about how you're doing. Uh, it's all about how, you know, Matt, how are you doing? Uh, oh, yeah, and say hi to That's because Chad. they're worried about your mental health. Well, that's true. So am I. <laughs> uh, listen, I just want to first say that there is nothing to joke about with mental health. Uh, but secondly, my weekend, uh, I was supposed to be on vacation this week. I don't know if you remember that. But I was supposed to be gone. We had this whole great trip planned out, me and the fam. Uh, I helped a buddy uh, fix up a uh, uh, an RV that he bought. It was a nice little RV, and and part of uh, why I was doing it so I could take the family on a nice little trip. And we were on the road for I don't know half an hour, and we threw a belt. The belt uh, on the the water pump seized up and threw the belt, and then the alternator wouldn't work, and so our vacation got cut short. We had a great time. That first 40 minutes was one of the best vacations I've ever had. It's the best 40 minutes of your life. <laughs> well, it's unfortunate, but you know, there's lots of, there's, there's worse things that can happen. Oh, for sure. We could have been in the middle of the desert. Yeah. We were discussing that. Like what if you had broken down in death Valley? Yeah. That's right? where we were kind of headed death Valley, then over to the grand Canyon then Sedona, then Back up through the through Death Valley. It was going to be a nice little southwest whirlwind. Yeah. And there's a lot of places in Nevada specifically that you break down and you are hours away from anybody. Yeah. yeah he's, so it's good that you broke down closer to home. But sure, we'll we'll get in a trip or two in the future and have a little bit of fun. Be able to get out in the RV. We were talking about actually getting an RV potentially for Pandola for the business Pandola for the project. empire, yeah. if you will. Yeah, yeah. We'll get a nice um, little wrap on it. Right. Uh huh. Right. Relative run readiness wrap with your big goofy face on the side. Oh gosh, no, <laughs> no. We'll put we'll put a picture of like Gwen or you know, Flora uh, Ben or somebody much more beautiful. I don't know if me. anybody really know to, knows this, and I don't know why they would. But if you take a look at our logo. Mm -hmm. uh, if you haven't seen our logo, we've got there's a triangle with a circle around it, and then there are two people in it running a a male and a female. I'm the male. No, you're not actually. Oh. You're not the male. <laughs> I was gonna say that male looks pretty good, like you're, pretty you're muscular not the male. and stuff. And... But the the female runner on there is actually a silhouette of Gwen Jorgensen. Yeah, she was nice enough to to let us use a, a picture of her to yep. uh, to base our logo off of. So, I know, and that's thanks, a, like a little nugget, a little hidden yeah. fact, a little Easter egg, a little Easter egg. Yeah. Okay, Pretty so nice. I'm, probably people have tuned out. So the, pe the yeah. two or three people that stayed listening, we're now going to talk. Do you remember? Yeah. No. Uh, we're going to talk about what, first of all, when we talk about muscle memory, why it's important, these kind of things. Because the longer that we train, the more that we are able to maintain or main gain Sometimes main we gain. call it main gaining. Did you just make that up? No, no. Uh, uh, I've I've heard it before. There's a, a guy, Jeff Duchet. He's talks a lot on. He's got a lot of fault, like a million people on YouTube or something. He's known for saying main main gaining, main gain. He does a lot of cycling. Um, 
and that also includes his um his his steroids and the PEDs he takes. And oh, stuff. I thought you meant like a bike cycle. He does actually. Oh. He does a lot of that too. Um, <laughs> just he's a, actually, just a lot of cycling. Yeah, he's yeah. actually a very knowledgeable guy though, and, and very straightforward, very honest, and very upfront about what he does because yeah, he's yeah. also a professional bodybuilder. So he doesn't he doesn't focus in only on like he doesn't race in. Uh, sure. on a bike sure. for money, right? He just does it for fun on, I think, Zwift or something. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, anyway, right. getting memory. to it, we're going to talk about how or why we even care about our muscle memory. So as we get more adaptions and as we make more progress, it can be actually easier to maintain our gains and or when we've taken time off for maybe it's an injury or maybe just because we we want to take some time off burnout whatever there's that that period of time when we come back that we can see that we have some muscle memory where we can get a little bit faster results than if we had never trained in those capacities before. So you don't lose it all. We don't lose it all. Right. Is and and why that is though is something I like to discuss because I think it is something that can arm us with, you know, this is the kind of knowledge that I think can really help us to give us a little bit better of an idea about why repetition and consistency, but also progressions and progressive overload is important, right? Okay, so we're, we're going to talk a little bit about what kinds of muscle we have, though, quickly, because we want to make sure that we understand that with muscle memory, we are talking about our skeletal muscle, which is about 40% of our body mass, guys. And in our skeletal muscle, we have multiple nuclei. So I'll get to that in a second. But with your cardiac muscle, so your heart's contracting to pump your blood and your involuntary smooth muscles, we're talking about organs, we're talking about passageways there. Those, those cardiac and involuntary muscles, those are just mononuclei. There's just... Different just, class. Right. And it's different. That's, that's, that's not what we're talking about here. Talking about skeletal muscle. Now, what's interesting to me about these neurological factors, these neural adaptions, they are really surrounded by this concept that the nuclei, that control center of the muscle, it actually does adapt to make uh, more capacity, okay, for your strength, for your muscle strength, we can start to look at that capacity almost in like, say you have um, a, f- a field, okay, and in that field, you have one person who's in the middle, and looking around and trying to see everything that's going on in a soccer game, okay? Um, That one player obviously is not going to be able to see everything that's going on all the time. Something, Something needs to be done here. So to increase that capacity, now we have another player that gets put off to the side of the field, but within the field. Now we might have another player that's set up in... Uh, the the end of each field, right? And before you know it, we have several players and we have a team. And with that team, now we can we can score more efficiently. Well, it's it's kind of the same way with muscle cells, where we start off with less nuclei. But as we start to create more of a demand and we want to become a better team, we start to recruit more players. Well, right. yeah. that's crazy. Right, right. And now this is kind of the, the cool part, too, is understanding that because of the stress demands and we do have to have enough demand, guys, there has to be a reason why our muscles start recruiting more of this additional help. In other Mm -hmm. words, we start to have more nuclei within the cell. And that cellular fusion, those satellite cells that fuse with the muscle cells, they donate nuclei within that process and that cellular fusion. We have that nuclear donation. That makes it easier to regain that lost muscle we talked about before and also, obviously, to maintain. Okay, But we have to have progress 
progressive overload as part of the principle, but we have to have, in other words, some sort of reason or demand for our muscle to want to have more help, right? To establish more help. In other words, we have to create a demand for for that. And that is where the stress comes in. And there's several different ways that we can accomplish that. And we'll talk about that in our very next episode, because I do want to make sure that we cover how to train for that. But right now, I just mainly want to talk about this concept and why muscle memory is really important and, and why it's something that should be part of your, your base of knowledge, right? Something that you understand about progressions and about your training. Because if we don't understand this, then I think we will oftentimes um, overtrain. Yeah, for So that's sure. the main thing I wanted to talk yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, Right? Uh, yeah, I think, um, correct me if I'm wrong here. Or, or uh, So what you're saying, we get all these helpers in here. We get all these players on our team and we've been training and they all come to help and then we stop training what happens to our team they just hang out for a while yeah that's a good question so yeah they depending on how much time that you take off so and how long you've been training right and so in other words though yes uh, you get a bigger team the longer that you've been training with focused intentional training technique torque mm-hmm those things. So again, it's not just about going through the motions and doing the same thing year after year. You won't necessarily get additional support because you didn't create demand for it. But creating additional support, it's also all relative, right? How much additional capacity Mm -hmm. do you need in the first place? Well, and also doesn't mean that you, you, you want your biceps to be as big as they can get or your quads as big as they can get or whatever. That doesn't necessarily mean equate to muscle memory. Is right. What you're well, saying. you're, you're um, touching on something too that I think when it comes to bulk and how mm-hmm. people will create more capacity for bodybuilding and that's a different type of process yeah, altogether. Yeah. That's a and different that team. does have muscle memory if you will. Um, And, you know, every relative goal or sport will have that kind of support, but it just, it still comes down to what type of stress or stress demands have you put on yourself. And then from there, we can talk a little bit further about how strong you are in that capacity Mm -hmm. and how you can main gain (laughs) or maintain that capacity for your goals. Right. So when, uh, I think that's a great subject you brought up though, because if you were to to say, decide to switch your relative goals over from endurance to more powerful type of sports, right? For some reason, if you wanted to now, uh, let's say, say you're, focused on your vertical for basketball, Mm -hmm. right? Now that's a different capacity altogether. So would you necessarily have the right type of muscle memory or neuromuscular coordination for that? No, not necessarily, but you still would have more capacity overall because you've still built up your calves. You've still built up your range of motion in your ankles. You've still worked on a lot of the abdominal flexion positions that you need for better overall integration. You know, I'm just throwing out examples of why you still have things that you can use in that same type of capacity, but it is a different goal now. So it's more neural driven that you can get that coordination, that Mm -hmm. explosiveness. But within the muscle itself, now we're starting to try to recruit or emphasize more absolute power if we're trying to get a better absolute vertical jump. So that is different. And that would be where you now would have to create some additional support and probably some additional nuclei for that, which is also why it can be helpful to train in ranges and in uh, those kind of adaptions that you do have more power, right, in your training. And I think that that's also something important to talk about is you don't just necessarily always want to do endurance because you're an endurance athlete, right? So when you come into the gym, 
and you work on dynamic efforts, you don't want to do reps all day long. You want right. to try to create more uh-huh. of that dynamic effort so that you have you you have the type of recruitment that's going to support your endurance. Yes, right. but doing more endurance on top of endurance is not really the answer, right? Right, right. Okay, and at the same time, doing just all absolute work, right? So doing, say, one, two, three reps to to your max, like that's not at the same time, like you, you're not going to do that constantly because that isn't really your main goal, mm-hmm. right? But you do want to do some of that absolute power work, 6.5 seconds or less, and that is going to help to addition give you additional support and recruitment that you need so you become more um so you increase more of your capacity so that you end up having more to recruit from in the first place so you have essentially less fatigue to do mm-hmm. the same thing right so this is this is what we'll talk about a little bit more in training on the next episode but just realize that with that three week training cycle that we often talk about with a progression and then a few weeks where you are training towards maybe a micro goal. So you have an introduction week, a progressive week, kind of like peeking out in your week, you might test for something or race, right? And then you have maybe a week or up to 10 days where you have some sort of a regression or you do cross training, right? Um, Or maybe it's just even a few days, like a micro regression. In either case, I think it's good to know about this concept in part so that you know that you can even have more progress by taking a little bit of time off. In fact, they have found that athletes that do periodically take a few days off per training cycle or even a week off per, say, six-week cycle, that they actually don't lose any strength doing that. They Hmm. end up in the same place strength-wise as athletes that train constantly all the way through. The difference is, though, that long-term, the athletes that take maybe a week off out of every three to six weeks, they are able to keep training more consistently long-term without the burnout, the injuries. So long-term over a two-week, uh, two-year period, excuse me, we see that they oftentimes make the most improvement overall. So we want to look at that and understand that, yeah, you're not going to lose a lot by taking a week off. In fact, the more experience you gain, the longer you can sustain. So going, let's say you're going into a race and now you're doing one set instead of three sets that you're used to because you want to taper a little bit. You don't want to overdo it. You're maintaining there. Okay. Yeah, you're maintaining. Yeah. Main gaining, as we refer to, is when you actually are able to get a little bit of muscle put on, but you know, not, not emphasizing a lot of muscle, but a little bit of muscle put on without a whole lot of extra effort, right? Mm-hmm. And without having to stuff yourself with like thousands of extra calories things like that. But the idea is that you don't have to worry so much once you've built this muscle memory up about maintaining. It's easier to do at that point. But when you want to main gain, it's like it takes a little extra effort. Obviously, you have to add maybe 10% more overall stress, right, on average, and that'll help you to to main gain, right? You'll be able to gain a little bit at a time. And that's, I like that. I like that saying main gaining because you're just a little bit above maintenance, a little bit above. And main gaining to me is very effective for athletes. You're not going to risk overreaching in your training too often. In other words, you're not going to risk overtraining long-term and get burnt out, injured, um, you know, sick, these type of things as often. And I think that that really plays to the vast majority of people out there. I mean, if you want to run and you want to run, you know, for a good portion of your life, 
because you enjoy it, because you enjoy the community, because you enjoy getting outdoors, all of that stuff. I think it's really uh, important and really helpful to understand that that you don't need to train like an Olympian. You don't have that you know, once every four years, you got to hit that goal or a world championship or something like that. And they, you know, they do train a little bit differently. But, but for most people, I think understanding that, that main gaining concept, you don't want to lose, and you don't want to stay at the same place, you just want to make those incremental improvements. I think that's a really important concept. Yeah, yeah. And I'll just finish my thought with this, but you asked if those players ever go away on the field once you yeah, recruit them yeah. and have that team. They never go away. You that they have at least that's what that's what studies are showing is that they may go dormant. You may have a few players asleep on the field <laughs> and you gotta wake them back up uh -huh. and but they're there. Once you develop them, they're there. And that's why a lot of times obviously you'll see somebody who is in really good athlete in high school and then they haven't done anything for years, but they start to run again and then before you know it, it's like, man, this kid was really fast in high school and now it's only been a few months and he or she now is pretty fast or even faster than me. And it's like, how did they do that? Because they, you know, they had those players on the field and they did work for that. There was yeah. a time in their life where they worked hard for that. And then now they just have to go wake them up. Um, and of course they still have to take it with a smart progression. They can't just throw themselves into right, what right. they were doing 20 years ago or 10 <laughs> years ago, but they do have a better time of it getting there in general. And uh, so that's, you know, but they earned it. You have to earn it still. Yeah, that's for darn sure. Hey, folks, uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode about muscle memory and main gaining. Uh, if you like us and you like this podcast, please push that little like button if you see it or a heart button. Share it with your friends, family, and neighbors. Uh, go visit us online at pendolaproject.com or on the social medias, mediums, medias. I don't know, Facebook, Instagram, whatever that is, at Pendola Project. And, uh, you know, you can check us out there. Check us out on the interwebs. Mm -hmm. A series of tubes. <laughs> <laughs> A series of tubes. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Thanks so much for listening to us. As always, we, we appreciate your support. And don't forget that we do have some extra Go Gwen Go books to give out. So if you've got a good question for us, Annie Fuller, you were our first winner. And Annie just gave us a big thank you for her book that she's now reading about one of her idols in the sport of triathlon. So we have Gwen more Jorgensen. books we can give out from mm -hmm. Gwen Jorgensen. So are these signed books? Yes, they signed? signed them. And she even said, go, uh, I believe it's go Pandola project athlete. Go. Ooh. So yeah, that's yeah. nice. Good stuff. Thanks Gwen. Yeah, man. Thanks everybody. All right, guys. Go, go, go. 